What's up, y'all? It is Tasha. I am back with another video. Thank you so much for stopping into my channel. Like, comment, subscribe. Well, I gotta keep repeating myself, huh? I'm just playing. I'm just playing. I'm just playing. <laughs> but y'all know what to do, okay? So we are here for another episode of Ready to Love. Child, it has been an extremely long day for me. So I'm gonna try to just get through this review as quickly as I can, all right? But we do have some things to discuss because some of these dates that was going on, honey, honey. Okay, let's let's talk about it, okay? But it is season eight, episode five of Ready to Love. This episode picks up where the last one left off. We finally get to know if Marvin or Red is going home. We find out it's the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle, AKA Red, that is going home. Thank you, baby Jesus. You heard all of our cries, okay? He said um, he came in the process being his genuine self. And it's not him that's not ready for love. It's the women that ain't ready to love him. Boy, bye. Get out of our face with this, okay? Um, so now the men um, this week will focus on figuring out what their non-negotiables are. And then they will set up, the, set up the dates with the ladies. We see Herbert and, Herbert and Quentin go on a double date with Janelle and Kat. We know that these two are her top two. Can't lie. I do like Janelle with Quentin. Um, Quentin says, you know, he's up for the competition. Janelle says, basically calls Herbert out and says, you know, I've been texting. I've been calling. You've been a little bit too busy because I ain't heard back from you. OK, um, so it's just the three of them first. And then Kat eventually shows up. Her and Janelle greet each other friendly. You know, hey, hey, girl, how you doing? Which if you've been on the Internet, you see that that's very different than the things that have been popping off as of late okay but we're gonna stick with what's happening on the show herbert says that his biggest non-negotiable is wanting children and kat says she's fine either way with kids but she knows of course if she now pursues herbert anymore she has to be 100 percent sure that she wants to have children quentin says his non-negotiable is emotional intelligence and janelle kind of agrees and says she just wants someone that is really really ambitious and she doesn't want someone that is non-complacent um so they play the new it sport these days pickleball which to me is like tennis but on a smaller court i I don't get it, but okay. Um, so we then see it's Janelle, Janelle and Quentin versus Herbert and Kat. Janelle and Quentin end up winning. He ends up picking her up. And y'all know, first of all, every woman likes this, but Janelle likes it because y'all know she wanted a man to be able to pick her up, honey. And he had no problems at all, okay? So they then basically swap part partners and they begin to talk to each other separately. So Janelle asks Herbert, basically, you know, are you just not that into me no more? Because, you know, I really kind of been reaching out to you. You haven't been in contact with me. He says he really doesn't get down with entertaining multiple women. And, you know, he's a little bit laid back and nonchalant, a little bit slower at the process. And I'm like, sir, the process you signed up for is to essentially date multiple women at one time. So if you know that's not your thing or that's not what you're good at, why did you sign up for this show? You should just continue to date women one on one and one at a time because you knew in this process that was not going to be the thing. OK, I just don't understand that. But he says now that he knows he will work to do better because he really wants her to feel like she is a priority to him. Um, we see Kat and Quentin talk. In my opinion, it's just more friendship vibes. I don't see any romance between the two of them. So next we see Chris, the original Chris. Um, he's on a one on one date with Aries. He invites her to his home. He surprises her with a chef to prepare dinner for them. And it includes some traditional Nigerian food. Aries was impressed and I was impressed too, girl. Like I love, please pamper me to a good old in-house chef. I am here for it. Okay. Aries shares that she has two sons, 11 and 13. Chris shares that he has an 11 year old daughter. So I love getting these little tidbits of information that we really don't get when the larger group is around. So I love um, that we found out about their children and how their relationships are with the parents. Aries says that, you know, her non-negotiable is someone that basically can be a good father figure for her boys. Um, and Chris says that one of his is that if he is dating a woman and that woman has children, what the relationship is like with the father of those kids. Um, they talk and they really seem to align on how they deal with co-parenting in those relationships. Um, but he says he really wanted her to come over to dig a little bit deeper because he really does not let a lot of people in. 
So he shares that um, the love that she has for her sons is really the same love that his mother gave to him. And he gets a little bit emotional as he's talking about it because both of his parents have passed away. Um, so a way to kind of get Aries to connect with his mom. Um, he said that he had a friend of his paint this picture of he and his mom. So he showed that to Aries and that's kind of her way of being able to meet his mom. And he said that, you know, he's really attracted to Aries because, you know, her relationship with her sons. Um, he says that she has such a nurturing spirit and that just really deepened their connection. So I think the two of them are cute. I'm not sure if I'm convinced that Aries is 100 percent on board with wanting to kick it with Chris like that. But I don't know. I could be wrong. So next we see um, on a date, we see Marvin and Unique and they are going horseback riding. He says, um, and Unique says that he is one of her top connections. And what she said, that I had to look up to my TV from my notes and was like, say, what now? I, when did this happen? Because I didn't, I wasn't convinced that Marvin had any top connections, but Unique says he is hers. I said, okay then girl. But they ride the horses until they get to this little picnic area that he has set up for them. Um, they kind of just sit and talk and then they actually end up sharing a kiss with one another. And I was like, whoa, well, okay, then I guess y'all like each other. All right. If we out here kissing folks and stuff, but Marvin shares that his non-negotiable is that he wants more children. He wants at least two more um, emphasis on at least. He says he wants to have a son. And I was like, well, Marvin, you know how this works, right? You know that we are not in control of whether we get a boy or a girl, unless of course, um, you go that route where they actually pull out the boy or the girl and that's what they impregnate you with. But other than that, we don't have control over that. And ain't nobody trying to have 50, 11 kids to try to get you a son. OK, OK. These kids are expensive. All right. So stop that. Um, we then see Morier. Child, he is in some shorts, some overall shorts. Morier, what in the hell do you have on? Where is you going in this outfit? Like, y'all, what? Between this this wavy hair and these overalls, I cannot. I just, I don't see him making it with anyone here. I am sorry. But he is going on a group date with Jessica, Kira, Sierra. And then he also invited the original Chris and Herbert. So they all show up for improv class. Chris and Jessica, they are first up to go in front of the class and their scenario is they have just left the scene of a car accident and how they would talk, talk through that. So pretty much Jessica uh, blames Chris for the accident <laughs> that they are in. And Chris is like, I'm not sure if we still in character or not, or this is how she would truly react to this scenario. And in my mind, I'm like, you better take what she's saying as the way she would react. <laughs> okay. But he says a non-negotiable for him is finding a resolution. And um, if the woman, if the woman cannot find a resolution, then it would be hard to move forward. And I was just like, why is that all on the woman, though, Chris? I'm it's both of you guys coming to some sort of resolution, not just the woman. Jessica says that, you know. Her non-negotiable is that she knows that couples are great together when things are on the up and up. But actually what happens when she becomes ill and he's like, you know, I have my own business. And if you become ill, a part of my business is going to be to take care of you until you are better. I said, well, OK, Chris, <laughs> talk your ish. OK, OK, talk your ish. All right. So next up is Herbert and Sierra. Um, their scenario is that they are visiting a, fam a family member in the hospital and basically the conversation that goes after that. They bypass the family member real fast and immediately start talking about how they walk past the nursery in the hospital and they wanted to go ahead and either take one of those babies or get it popping and making their own baby. So Sierra says that one of her non-negotiables is having kids. She wants to be married first though, but she really wants to have children. And we already know based on Herbert's date earlier that he wants to have kids too. So they are definitely 100% on the same page uh, with that. They just want to have a good foundation first as a couple. And then for them, they can go in the bathroom right now and make some babies, okay? That's just what they say. <laughs> we then see Kira and Morier. They're the last two that go up for the improv class. And their scenario is they're at lunch um, on a Sunday afternoon. So they immediately start talking about church and Morier was like, huh? 
Well, I was at Bedside Baptist, basically, aka I ain't go to church, okay? Um, and then Kara, Kira is feeling some kind of way about that, and she says she wants a man who loves the Lord and has a relationship with him. And of course, y'all know in Kira's head how she do. That's a red flag for her that he don't go to church every Sunday, okay? Um, Morier says his non-negotiable is someone who is not health conscious. And y'all don't judge me, but I was completely shocked because I know people come in all shapes and sizes. I am well aware that somebody can work out and still not have a body. Hell, I work out most days of the week and I ain't walking right here with no six pack or nothing. You can tell I still enjoy a cookie or two. OK, that's all I got to say. However, no tea, no shade. I did not get that Morier is into exercising and healthy eating. I just. I just don't get that from what I see physically from him I don't get that but that's what he says is a non-negotiable for him but he says that he feel like Kira may have been out of her element and really it would be tough for someone for him to be with someone like her if she just really doesn't like to let loose and have fun so next we see Philip and Kat meet up for lunch Kat is dressed super cute Kat is just so pretty and she got the girls on display for Philip today okay Philip tells her that his non-negotiable is that he kind of got out of religion, that he grew up with that all his life. And now he is more spiritual and Kat can relate to him and me, I, Tasha, I can relate to them as well because spirituality is really where I sit on that side of the fence more so these days. OK, um, he asks how she feels about men with children. She says it's cool, but I kind of want the kids out of diapers because, you know, when they in diapers, you got to have all this interaction with the mama and you walking in the house smelling all good. I'm wondering why you kinda, why you smelling all good to go to your baby mom house. Now I got to go with you and we got to figure out what's happening. And cat, we see each other because child when i was dating that was definitely my vibe as well of anybody under you got a kid under like four or five mm, it's probably going to be a no for me because of this same reason as well like you still have to have a lot of interaction with the mother of that child and i just don't know if those feelings just might resurface as y'all are bonding over you know changing the baby's diaper or at a doctor's appointment i just don't know so i would rather just stay away from men that have children that young okay next we see quentin goes on a date um to a boxing studio with unique and kira unique shows up first and quentin is already starting to work out child he wants the muscles to start popping so they look good in that little sleeveless shirt he got on unique takes off her jacket she's ready to jump right into the date as well they do some boxing and then kira shows up y'all kira i think i said this before in another video she just don't do it for me um she is low-key annoying she low-key acts like a teenager to me like i just don't see it for her and i'm ready for her to exit stage left okay but the trainer comes shows them what to do they get to the workout the workout is done unique asks quentin if the co-parenting relationship is important to him and she says and he says yes that essentially the conversation that you know they had earlier with um, what was that Aries and Chris of co-parenting like that is important of how you guys get along with one another as you're raising you know your children together um, she shares that she is still on her healing journey he shares that he has really healed from his family things and he's really ready for a relationship and you need you say you have healed honey but it's really coming off like you got a little bit more work to do. And that's OK. Healing is not in is not a destination that you necessarily arrive to. But you definitely have to have healed enough so that the past things that have hurt you um, in any type of way, you don't then bring that on someone else. And you can completely eliminate that from your mind and move forward to that. You will still continue to try to strive to make yourself a better person, but you do have to be at a certain place in your healing journey, in my opinion, before you should be bringing other people into your life because you don't want all that baggage going on to somebody that did, that did not pack those bags with you, okay? But she says her takeaway from this date was maybe not who she was on a date with, but maybe for her to learn a little bit more about herself. And I can appreciate her for having that that outlook. Kira then comes back from the restroom child. And she says she doesn't get genuine vibes from Quentin. Kira, you have not even had enough interaction with Quentin to figure out what kind of vibes you get from him, at least from what we've seen on the TV child. 
She then comes in with this nonsense of asking him his preference because it seems like he likes white women. And she says, oh, because most of my friends are white, I feel like I can say that. Kira, you sound like the white person who feels like they can say the N word because most of their friends are black. That's how you're sounding right now. You sounding crazy and stupid like say what because most of your friends are white you feel like you can ask him if he is if his preference is white women oh gosh he says he would not be on this journey if he only wanted to date white women he has never dated a white woman in his life and she's like really well how about latinas like just trying to throw out any other woman other than a black woman. He's like, yeah, I've dated Latinas, but his face is, is really puzzled. Just like my face is really puzzled as to why are you even asking him this? And why does it feel like, because you feel this way, you almost want to push this narrative off on this man. Although that's not how he thinks like, Kira girl, you was already rubbing me the wrong way. And this right here did not help your case girl. Okay. Um, I just don't understand why it matters who he dated before. And again, you have not, you don't know enough about him to make that assumption, girl. Be quiet. And the only thing I can think about this entire time is low key, no, high key, you look like you only date white boys, but yet you trying to push that off on him like he's only into white girls. When he doesn't give off that vibe, but you give off the vibe that <laughs> Blonde hair and blue eyes, you are for me. Girl, but he says, you know, he makes it clear he loves black women. His parents have black love. His grandparents have black love and he wants black love. OK, but he says he just really doesn't know where this question came from. And now he really is not interested in getting to know Kira any further. And I don't blame him. OK, so the men to come together in the lounge with Tommy to discuss the lady. So now, of course, we see who's at the top and who's at the bottom. This week, we didn't see new Chris or we didn't see Lee go on a date. So I don't know if that just did not make the, the cut so that we saw that on our actual TV screens. Um, the guys talk about their connections. Morier is feeling Jessica, but I strongly believe she is not feeling him like that. And when Tommy asks if they're on the same page, he's like, yeah, they on the same page. And I'm like, what page of the book is it? Because I don't feel like yeah, I feel like y'all in two different books. OK. But Chris says he has a connection with Aries. Um, new Chris says he has a connection with Kira. And I'm like, from where now? From what? Okay. Marvin shares that his strongest connection is with Kat. Um, although him and Unique shared a kiss. And I was just like, well, why did you kiss this woman? If you get friendship vibes and she wasn't your top, why'd you kiss this woman on this date? Herbert has a connection with Janelle and Lee. Quentin shares that he has the same connection with those two women as well. And I said, this is a simple solution. Do what I do with my kids when they can't agree. They play rock, paper, scissors. Y'all just play rock, paper, scissors. Whoever, you know, wins, they get their top choice. And then the, the other man, man gets whoever is left over. I mean, not left over in a bad way. But so y'all quit fighting over the same women. <laughs> Sounds simple to me, okay? Um, we then see who's not a fan favorite, which Kira isn't a fan favorite among most women. Herbert says that Aries isn't a fan favorite for him because she doesn't want any more children, which. OK, like most women, men kill me at this age of late 30s, early 40s. Trust me, as somebody that has been in these streets day in, there are a lot of men in that age range who want children you're not going to find a ton of women in your same age group that want to have one, two, three, four, five children. You, it's just, sir, sir, our bodies have a biological clock. Okay. We just cannot forever have babies like y'all can forever have babies. And it just continues to trip me out because I have experienced this in my own personal life. And to see this play out on TV, I was like, y'all men, y'all are just, y'all are full of it. Okay. I just don't get it. Anyway, child, um, Chris, new Chris says the same about Aries because he wants children as well. Philip puts Janelle at the bottom and then Marvin puts Unique at the bottom and so does Morier. Again, 
Marvin, why did you kiss this woman? Because you are definitely sending mixed signals to her acting like you are so into her while y'all were on that date. And then you come into the lounge and you put her on the bottom. Sir, make it make sense. All right. Anyway, it ends up the two bottom women are Kira and Unique. So Kira meets up with Marie after the lounge. She says, I don't know what to expect. But I'm happy to get to know Maurier a little bit better. I'm like, girl, stop lying. No, you're not. You just want to like whoever so you continue to stay here. Um, Marvin meets up with Unique and she knows something is up because the guys have met with Tommy. Maurier asks Kira how she enjoyed the date and she says, you know, the improv date was out of her element for sure. Marvin shares that, you know, to Unique that he's wanted to go horseback riding since he moved to Texas. And he says... That the thing that he really loves about her is, his, is her confidence and that's what really drew him in. Again, he is still providing mixed signals to her even in this very moment that he's still acting like he's so into her when he had a completely different story in the men's lounge. Morier tells Kira that the fellas met um, and of course Marvin tells Unique the same. And uh, Marvin tells Unique that some of the guys think she still has some healing to do. Morier tells Kira that the conversation surrounding her was really about the culture. And then Kira has the nerves to talk about how black she is and all this stuff and says, you know, I kind of feel disrespected. Girl, you know, you are the black girl that comes off of a white girl. Like, don't even don't even try to, especially after in this same episode, you have basically try to throw at this black man that he likes white women anyway um before morier checks to make sure that there's no cheese on his burger and it's mustard instead he tells kira that you know she is still ready for love kira get off my tv i really want you to get off my my tv but you'll be here for a little bit longer because the guys say you are still ready for love so that means that they have decided that unique is not ready for love but she does emphasize that she is healed and she is ready again girl you giving a little bit of mixed signals too because you just said when you was on the date with quentin that you were still healing um and it's a bit of a journey so yeah, which one is it? Are you healed or are you still are you still going? I personally think you you have not reached the place maybe that you need to be at. Not that you aren't well on your way. You just haven't arrived there yet. And it's OK when you're ready. The right guy will find you. I don't feel like your guy was here anyway, girl. So take that as, you know, a little protection from G.O.D. above and move on and i hope you find love girl but anyways we know how next week goes it's then gonna be the ladies turn to get rid of one of the guys and i hope they send one of these guys home on the episode because i'm tired of leaving off on the cliffhanger for the men but then for the women we go ahead and know who's going home we want to know which one of these raggedy men going home the same night as well okay let me know what y'all thought about the episode of this week for ready to love drop your comments in the comment section below and we will chat it up there until next time peace